Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. Welcome if you're new. I'm Stacy, and today we are going to be working on that Hanamula, Hanamula velour paper again. That really soft, um, fuzzy paper. Uh, this is the bright green one. I decided to do a um, coral reef kind of piece with a little yellow fish. Um, and it, I believe it's a fish tank, like it's an actual freshwater tank, pic a picture of one, the, re the reference photo, I mean. Um, you can find the reference photo on, uh, I believe either Unsplash or Pixabay, if you look up yellow fish. Um, I decided to block in the, uh, the little yellow fish first. I, I have out all of my pastels. To the right is my uh, collection of Prismacolor new pastels, which I have broken in half. Half the set is still in the box and the other half is in this tray. I find it's easier to work with them that way. They're really long sticks. Uh, there's no need to have all, the whole stick out um, for me, for, for the way I work. Up to the top of the paper on the right is my Mungio handmade set and to the left is my tray of Soho's. All of which are great pastels and I use all of them in this um, piece. It just depends what you're looking for. The Prismacolor ones are a little firmer, quite a lot actually. Uh, they do go down pretty well, but I've they have some sort of like smooth hard finish on the outside edges, so I have had to run them on sandpaper to get them to get them rolling. But after that, they they work just fine. Um I'm not sure why, but I decided to block in the little yellow fish first instead of starting with all the purples just seemed right um, and I also decided to time lapse on voice over this because it took about an hour and 20 minutes for me to do this piece and uh, I was listening to my book and just kind of going slow and enjoying myself not really thinking just listening to a story and putting down pastels on paper um Bouncing back and forth between white and yellow on the fishy and then decided to grab a Soho purple and try to block in the base color of the... I got a hair on there. Excuse me. <laughs> um, to block in the, the bottom of the fish tank where all the little purple gravels are. Um, it could be reflected sand as well. Like the sand could just look purple, but I'm pretty sure it's a fish tank. Um... I decided to try and get the gist of the the bottom of the tank in. Um, the purple is super bright against that green. And I want the green to peek through here and there. Um, it is part of the uh, um, coral, the purple coral stuff that's actually growing in behind the fish. Uh, you can see specks of the this exact bright green in the in the reference photo so I leave a bit of that peeking through here and there for quite some time and I just base in that that purple everywhere and then decisions decisions which purple do I use next and I decided to go in with this kind of mid-tone purple to get in the darker areas and throw in that that shadow underneath the reef right there behind the fish and I bounce back and forth between th that purple the pink that I just picked up couldn't decide if I wanted to put in the darks first or the lights on top of that mid-tone because it feels very mid-tone right now um, and just kind of going with emotion went ahead and plopped in some pur pink to see how that that felt and then the mid-tone purple on top or the that darker purple to get in the shadows and try and make it look like um, a hard coral reef which is mostly purple on purple on purple in the reference photo with bits of green highlights here and there I don't know what that noise was something behind me on the table must have settled <laughs> 
<laughs> I've made a pretty big mess in the art room. Um, I have several projects going on right now. Um, moving at the end of August, so I'm trying to get a lot of things done in the next five months. Um, get everything that I can created for um, upcoming craft sales and whatnot, because I'm not going to have a lot of time to probably do that with a new job and whatnot. But yeah, I have a lot of projects going on right now, so things are a little bit of a mess. Um, at any rate, back to the piece. Uh, just blocking in shadows, getting those corners in. Um, that background is pretty dark. It's almost black, but I didn't want it to read black. So I put the dark purple in first and kind of just scribble in some shadow shapes underneath and around the fish and underneath where I think the shadow shapes should be for the coral to make it look more 3D. And there's this one little bit of in front of the fish there, in front of his little head, there's one little bit of stuff growing like right in front of him. So that's what that little upsweep, uh, those upsweep lines are supposed to convey. I'm just kind of fidgeting and going back and forth and back and forth with the purple and the pink and the purple. I'm putting in more pink because things feel really dark. Or no, I'm putting in that light tone purple over that pink because it felt really dark. Too dark. And this paper is so great to work on, you guys. I highly recommend it. Down here, I do little... I try pointillism. I'm not... Art Snacks wants me to pay attention to them. <laughs> I get alerts from Art Snacks on my phone. I should probably turn that off. Um, and then I, I just block in a darker purple over the top of that light purple and kind of up at the up at the top and back down to the bottom and all over the map on this, this piece, kind of working everywhere at once to keep things cohesive and make it feel more realistic. Um, feels, working on this paper, the finished pieces always end up looking a little... Um, out of focus, a little like furry and out of focus. Uh, so that's throwing me a little bit here too. Uh, I grab one of my, this is the Prussian blue, which is a favorite, um, pastel of mine in the Mungio Handmaids. I decide to go in with the Prussian blue over the purple for the super dark spots, those deep dark shadows that I don't want to use black but I do want to read dark and I think that works out pretty well um I don't know I really enjoy how the piece turned out in the end so I'm not unhappy with any of my choices I do wish though that the piece was a little crisper you know that uh, a little bit more realistic I guess and I just struggle to, to get that effect with these big chunky pastels. I am super happy with almost every piece that I've created on, on this paper though. And I've pretty much at this point obliterated the green. It's just peeking through under the fish to make him look yellow green, which I enjoy. And then a little, there's a little pocket of it here and there. But I did, I did obliterate more than I meant to. I'm, I'm trying to get that um, cauliflower looking. Because these, these corals looked like cauliflower shapes, but purples. So that's the effect I'm going for. With putting in the darks and then putting in more purple. And then putting in the darks and edging in here and there. Giving a little bit of depth and shadow. This is one of my favorite, favorite colors anyways. It's basically indigo <laughs> on this paper. And just delicately touching here and there. And back to that mid-tone purple to kind of get more form. And I'm, I stipple in some areas just to... I'm stippling to try to get that cauliflower looking effect. 
Uh, it kind of works. In the end, it, it, it kind of looks that way. Distant at the same time, but textured. Um, no, sorry, I just got myself. I'm saying um a lot again, huh? Apologize. And then I was thinking, you know what? I'm thinking that about this way too much. I'm basically painting clouds. I'm painting super dense, fluffy clouds was where my brain went. So just paint clouds. Just if that's easier for you to think about it that way, just do that. And then I finally did break down and grab the black, <laughs> put it in that corner because the blue just was not feeling dark enough. I really did. I was struggling. I really didn't want to put black down, but I needed to push that back, like really back. And, and it seemed to help. It helped push the coral more down and forward and give, gave it that bit of depth that the piece really needed. <coughs> Sorry, I need a sip of water. I literally haven't talked to anybody. Um, I was on the phone for like 15 minutes with my boyfriend earlier, but other than that, I haven't talked to anyone all day today. So my vocals are not, uh, my vocals are not up to snuff. <laughs> um, yeah, I get in those deep, dark blacks and throw in some deep, dark shadows in the coral. Once I get start, one, it's just like with clouds. Once you get started putting in something, it's hard to stop. It's hard to know when to stop. When is enough? So you got, you just got to kind of go by feeling I've found. Um, if you can walk away from it and look back at it and it feels good, leave it alone is what I've discovered. But when you're up on it like this, it's hard to know. Is it our, am, am I done? Is it good? Uh, but I feel like putting in the black gave it that little bit more um, depth and it separated the clumps of coral uh, enough that they felt like different pieces. So about here is when I started feeling a little better about the whole piece. You know, you got to get it through that ugly phase, right? That phase where you're like, oh, this is terrible. Oh, I don't, I really am not enjoying this. <laughs> this is just not turning out the way I want. Um, especially with a newer medium. Uh, not that pastels are a new medium, but this paper is a new medium. This paper is challenging because it's basically like drawing on fabric. And once you put the product down on this paper, it's down. There's not really any smudging or pushing it around or um, erasing it or lifting it up. It's in the fibers of the paper and down and done. So... Um, creating like upside down clouds, super bright on and on the top and then a little mid-tone and then super dark in between was what I was thinking as I was putting these in. And then I need to make it look like layers, right? And then I realized I obliterated all of that bright green texture that's on the, like the tops of the coral. So I put a, put a little bit of that in and this is exactly the right color for it super vibrant kind of pops clean off the page and I got it down and I was like I can't just put it in that one spot so I decided to go ahead and put it in places it's not in the reference photo it's not on this little bush in the front and it's not in any of the coral up above the fishy but I decided to go ahead and try and put it in and see see if it gives it more cohesiveness and I really like how that that looks it, it looks right um, so yeah, I really do wish I had let the paper do the work for me though. I totally just forgot about it and my passionate need to put the, put the pastel on the paper. <laughs> and I'm trying to make that little bit of sprig look like it's in, in the scene instead of just like stuck on top. And then fussing with the, the coral a little bit more. Touch more green, just a, just a bit, just a tiny bit of a lighter green. And then there are little roundy disc-shaped 
bits here and there. So I decided to go ahead and try and put a couple of those in. And what am I doing here? White. Yeah, I got white in there just to give things a little glisten. A little, a little bit of glisten. Another coat of that mid-tone purple. And I don't know why I try to blend it and smooth it. It kind of pushes it into the paper, if nothing else. It will settle the, the pigment more deeply into the fibers. And then I'm using the very tip of the handmade white and twisting it in little circles all over the page to create the effect of those tiny glistening stones. Because the, the little, um, they look glass, um, but all the little purple stones that they have in the bottom of the fish tank glisten and sparkle. So that's what I'm doing right now. And I think it was pretty effective. Um, you know, flying by the seat of my pants here, experimenting, playing, seeing what will work and what won't. And then I decide to take my fingernail and scrape it on the side. And you know how you make stars for a sky? I decided to do that all over the bottom to more quickly get down that texture, that sparkly texture. And I feel like that was really effective too. And you just have to pat it into the paper. Um, just tap, 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 tap. And it settles it into the paper once you get it down. And it stays. It stays stuck. Um, which is super enjoyable. And then I decide... It needs a little more, you know, depth, a little more variation in, in the stones. So I went ahead and did more twisting the tip of the pastel. Uh, because the tip of the pastel isn't uniform or flat. It's handmade, so it's round, but it has like a it has like a little round texture so you can make circles with it basically. See there I am patting it in. Pat, 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 pat. And then finishing touches here, I'm gonna get the eye in. I try with the um, Prismacolor New Pastel because it's nice and firm and it has a sharp corner so you can get decent lines with them. But um, I have all my colored pencils out and I was wondering, you know, hey, would that work over the top of this? Like would colored pencil work on this paper? I didn't even think to use colored pencil on this paper because the pad says four pastels, <laughs> but it works quite well, actually. So I could technically do, and I'm going to experiment with the, the last few pieces that I have of this paper. You could technically do an entire colored pencil piece on this paper because um, it took the pigment from the pen pencil really nicely. So I got in a bunch of details on the little fishy on the fins. I put in some more of that mint green or well that well it's kind of a minty green. It's more of a grass green, I guess. Um to give the fins some depth and to give the fish some di dimensionality, brighten up those yellows with the new pastel on top. And a little bit more white cuz now that I'm really looking at the fish with fresher eyes in comparison with the fish in the reference photo and how it overall looks on the page, I decided it needed a little more pop and oomph and dimension. And like I said, the colored pencil goes down on top really nicely. Uh, I, I really enjoyed that it got those textures in that I needed in the fins and around the eye and the gill area. Really dig that. So for future pieces, now I know. I don't know why I limited myself to just chalk pastels. Silly girl. <laughs> um, we're getting close to finished. And for some reason, I decided I needed a bit of orange. Just for in the shadowy areas. Just a touch. Because he's not orange at all. He's a super bright yellow fish. But artist prerogative, right? You get to do what you want. I do what I want. A little bit of yellow around the eye because I, I obliterated some of it. And then just touching up. Just touch, touch, touch here and there. And I think we're pr 
pretty close to finished. Yeah, I'm going to take the tape off now. <gasps> and see that crisp green border with the green details in, on the coral? Complements it so nicely and gives it that finished look. I love that. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. How do you feel about this piece? Are there other things you could I could do to get different effects on this paper? Has anyone else worked with this velour paper? Um, but yeah, all done. And here's our close up of the little fishy and all the textures and see how it looks fuzzy and slightly out of focus. I just can't get away from that at all. But overall, I really like the piece. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, how you feel about it. Uh, here's our, our reference photo. And here's our piece. Not too shabbily. Thanks for watching, you guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.